And here is my favorite. Little wind belt. It's called aerodynamic fluttering. And this powers a sensor. For one US dollar, it works for 20 years. That's exactly how the wind plays in the trees. Battery-free sensors. If you have for 20 years sensors without batteries, we have saved the world of over a trillion batteries. Welcome to the world of nature. And look at that pole there. You see that pole? Next one. And you see that little pole, there you have a one meter string in there, and that powers the light in the back. We are operating wind energy the way the Buddhists have learned how to harvest wind in order to pray. You know that. The more wind, the more prayer. And so what we're now proposing to our dear friends in Bhutan is that next one, we're making holy energy. This is the moment to relax and think about it. The more flags you put up, the more flutter you have, and all the flutter in these poles can be translated into electricity. We can now connect for $1.50 a flagpole, we have electricity to read and to power. $1.50 a unit. No turbines, no pylons needed. That is the new economy. That's innovation, eliminating what we don't need. Now we can go on. Rethinking polymers. Next one. Polymers in industry are made perhaps from petroleum or starch, but nature uses amino acids. Next one. And of course the mulberry worm is the most famous one. Next one. But the strongest one is the one coming from the spider. That spider is so strong it can be titanium in weight performance basis. So the geometry is determined by a chemistry based on water. Water-based chemistry, that's nice. Water is a solvent, I like that. Because I know what kind of water treatment plants we need today in order to take care of all the chemistry that we use for making any polymer. So here you see the spider, and there you see the German machines already manufactured in Aachen, in Germany, whereby they're able to just use water and pressure to make a fiber that is stronger than titanium. That's smart. Next one. Next. Thank you. There's Fritz. Fritz Volrath, the engineer who does it. Silk outcompetes titanium. That's great. In what area? In price and performance. Next one. Because today, titanium is getting more and more expensive. Today, the starting point for silk is cheaper than titanium. Next. But the real value of the silkworm... Next is that when you have one ton of silk, you will have nine tons of fertilizer. Next. The Chinese 5,000 years ago, they started planting mulberry because they realized there was going to be a population explosion and not enough arable land to farm. And as a result, they started planting mulberry trees. And only a 1,000 years later, they figured out when the empress was sitting under the tree that a cocoon fell into her cup. She started pulling it out, and she had 300 yards of silk. The silk industry was born a thousand years after the Chinese launched regeneration of topsoil. Topsoil is one of the biggest challenges we have in our, in, in our world. We need to preserve topsoil. So let's have the following. Next. Let's shift from the Gillette Mac 3 or Wilkinson 7, whatever you use. You shift from that, and you go to the other side, and there you see the prototype of the razor. A razor that rolls over your face and that's made out of silk and that chops off the little pieces of hair from your face. And what is the result? If I am substituting the 100,000 tons of titanium that is now going to landfills with silk, with this new apparatus, then I need to reforest 250,000 hectares of land around the world, preferably dry land that's no use to anything else. And we generate 1.2 million jobs. And now you can stand in the morning in front of your mirror and say, I'm shaving, generating jobs, generating topsoil. Next. Polymers with jobs and topsoil. And this is exactly how the chairman of the Green Initiative uh, from Korea said it. We have, too much we have too much growth without jobs. We need to have growth with jobs. Two cases left, one very short, glass. This is glass waste. This is glass that is classified by the industry as unrecyclable. 
because it's a blend of the yellow, the green, and the white. Go on, keep on clicking, keep on clicking. Here you see the glass, keep on clicking. And there it's being injected with CO2. Did we hear it right? Yes. You inject CO2 into the molten glass and you make a building material. And here the building's approved now in Sweden, whereby you make a building out of glass. Glass competing straight on with steel, reinforced concrete, and cement. And the glass has four functions because one, it's structural material. Two, no rats can ever bite their way through it. Three, it's an insulator. Four, it doesn't let any water through. And five, you get carbon credits for it. Now, this is an interesting new business model. And what we see emerge is a different way of looking at business because the cascading, the way we saw it, is the way natural systems always cascade. With five million bottles, you're in break even. So maybe I could entice our dear friends from Coca-Cola to start switching back to the glass bottles. Because maybe Coca-Cola is not in the building industry, but this is an interesting contribution. Because we can really make a dramatic drop in our carbon footprint if we can reduce the steel and reinforce cement in our buildings. The European Union has approved the buildings. Last example. We have to rethink forests. CNN featured this a couple of years ago. And here you see a savanna that is being converted in Colombia. And here you see the site in Colombia, close to the Venezuelan border. And that is being reconverted. Next, next. And that is being reconverted into a forest. In 25 years' time, we succeeded in converting savanna that was destroyed by cattle farming back into the rainforest, bringing biodiversity from 17 species of grasses, 11 non-native, to 256 species. Next. Next. The latest innovation is that we're tapping the trees. We're getting the biochemicals for which there is hardly a market, but now we're also getting the fuel, the turpentine. This is our biorefinery. Any project that I'm submitting to you are projects that are implemented. No pie in the sky, reality. If you want to come and see this factory, come over and see it. Now, we're commercializing the fuel, which is the turpentine, which we purify at 10 micron. And as a result, we can use it both for diesel engines and gasoline engines. Next. The income we get from this, we plant more trees. Then we generate more wood. Then we fix more CO2. Then we generate more biofuels. Stop, stop, stop. We generate more biofuels by consuming biofuels. This is a kind of an interesting business. This is business model the way nature does it. Yes, let's go on. We generate full-time jobs. We have drinking water because if you have more forests, you have more drinking water. And we build up social capital. Next. Now, what more do you want? Well, the more that I want to share with you in my conclusion here, is that the cost of the land in 84 was $1 per acre. Today, the land is valued at $3,000 an acre. That is a better return than if you would have invested in Microsoft over 25 years. Ladies and gentlemen, planting trees on a savanna that was infertile and regenerating biodiversity, supplying drinking water, gives you a better return than setting money of yours for 25 years in Microsoft, one of the most successful companies ever. This is a new kind of economy. This is the real green economy we want to go for. This is the one that shifts the way things work, because we can prove it is not just sustainable, from an environmental point of view, it is also financially beating the market. To conclude, from my dear mentor from Japan, some people dream to escape reality. Others dream to change reality forever. This conference has to contribute to change the mindset so you will change reality forever. Nothing less. Thank you.